Hey guys, it's coming another movie for you guys, and this movie reviewing, I was definitely really looking forward to this movie. I wanted to see this last week, I never got the chance to see it, and finally I had the opportunity to see it uh, this weekend. I am very happy that I did, because there were two movies that I had to see for SMA, I could not end May without seeing these two movies in theaters. One was X-Men Apocalypse, and the other one was the movie I saw today, and this movie has been getting, you know, tons of praise and tons of critical acclaim, and I just had to see it, and that movie is none other than The Nice Guys. I was so looking forward to this movie. I mean, it looks so funny, it looks so fresh, and it looked really original, and that was something I was really looking forward to. Um... Of course, you know, Shane Black is famous for these kind of movies, but I was also a bit worried because the trailer was so funny. I was worried that the trailer showed most of the funny parts and that the movie wouldn't be as funny, so I was a bit worried about that going into it. But after coming out of it, I'd say that not only was The Nice Guys a really hilarious movie, in general, it's a great movie. I really love The Nice Guys. It was, I was going to say it was a masterpiece, but it falls very short of being a masterpiece. I absolutely love this movie. I think it's fantastic. By far, one of the funniest movies. Um, I've seen so far this year. If not for if Deadpool, if I can't count Deadpool as a comedy, it is the funniest comedy I've seen this year. Um, let's get to the plot of the nice guys, which is really simple. Basically, we focus on these two detectives. We have um, we we have Healy and we have Holland, who does not like to be called by his last name, so I'm gonna call him Holland because if he calls me March, he'll correct me and say Holland. So Healy and Holland, these two guys, they are one is a detective. You know, we see Healy is not a detective; he dreams of being a detective. He's actually kind of what he calls a fixer, I believe, where basically he, you know, if you have someone that you want to get beaten up or you have someone that really, um, you know, is is, is giving you a hard time, Healy will beat the shit out of them and probably kill them. That's clearly who Healy is. He kind of dreams of being a detective, while Holland is a detective, and these two are forced to work together after they hear about this, um, this crime that's going on. Basically, this girl, um, there was this, uh, porn star that was murdered, and somehow this girl, Amelia, is connected to it, but Amelia has ran away, and they have to find a way to find Amelia so they can get information out of her and basically find out what's going on, and that basically is the plot of the nice guys. Now, there's a lot more going on in this movie besides that, but that basically is the plot, and Right off the bat, I really do love the plot of this movie, but that's really not the thing that makes the movie. There are a lot of things that really make this movie, but without a doubt, one of the things that makes this movie the most is the cast. Now, yes, I think going into this movie, the thing we are most looking forward to is Russell Crowe, Ryan Glossing. They're in a movie together. It's a very different kind of pair. They've never been in a movie together before. How are they going to work together? And yes, that's a big part of this, but that's not the thing that makes this so great. These two guys, yes, they have fantastic chemistry and they work so well together, but it's also because this is not one of those cases where they are different characters because in many ways they are the same characters. They're both very damaged. They both have very troubling past and they both have a lot going on with them. Who I was the most drawn to probably from the two was Healy played by Russell Crowe. I thought he did a fantastic job in this movie because he really just doesn't, he's kind of down his luck. He's kind of depressed. He doesn't really feel that great about himself. He wants to feel good about himself. The only time he did was when he gets to hurt people and it's really interesting. There's this great sequence where he's telling the story to um, Holland's character and you can just tell the joy that he feels from telling the story. I mean, it's a pretty dark story but it's really the only time where he felt good in his life. It actually does get quite sad, and I definitely did like seeing that, while Holland, for example, you know, he's a little bit better, but he still is a single dad, you know, he has to raise his daughter all on his own, and I think they both did a great job, you can both tell they really do care for each other, and they're both trying to get to know each other, because while they're both very much the same, they're also quite different in the way they think about things, in the way they are, and I definitely really did like seeing that, um, I think they both were very awesome, and they're really funny as well, obviously they're both very funny, they all have some fantastic one-liners, and it's not just one-liners though, there are some great gaps. Like, there's this great scene, um, the scene where Healy and Holland, the way they decide to team up together, is hilarious. I've never really seen it done that way. I mean, it feels so different, but I absolutely love it. I love the way that was done. I think they work so well together, and they by far are the really the thing that makes this movie. They really were fantastic, but they're not the only thing that makes this movie, because while these two as a duo are great, this movie actually is about a trio, and we'll get into that third member right now. Now, while much of this film is fantastic and just defined by Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe and how great these two work together, the third member of the team I think is just as great, if not better, and that is Angry Re, Angry Re Rice, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, as, um... 
Holland's daughter, Holly. She is fantastic. I loved everything about her character. Not just because of the fact that she's a 13-year-old girl and she's saying all these dirty things, because, let's face it, most 13-year-old girls, not far off from that. They're probably very much like Holly. It's not that weird. But she also is incredibly smart and in many times kind of outsmarts the two. And the fact that she wants to go on these missions with them, she's not thrown into it. They even tell her, you know, we don't want you involved with this. She still is getting involved and they basically don't say no to her. She does become a member of their team. I love seeing these three work together. They all worked so well and she compliments those two so nicely and honestly there's no time where they're get where she's getting outshined because of the two of them that was something i was a bit worried about i'm like uh, i don't know but many times no i think she outshined them you know really i think she really was fantastic she had some of the funniest lines in the movie but she also was a really great character she doesn't put up with bullshit she's very mature for her age and she likes to act very adult you know she's not someone like um healy's daughter who we realize right away you know she sleeps around she has a boyfriend. She's kind of in the hippie culture, that kind of thing. Um, that is not at all um, Holly. She is much more reserved. She's a lot different than that, and I definitely really like about her character. I think she did a great job, and she definitely, these three, they anchor the movie together. It is awesome to see them, uh, you know, solve this crime and everything that's going on. And without the movie, I don't really think the movie would be as good if Holly was not there. Holly really does make a great part of this movie. I really love seeing her. And as the movie went on, I appreciated her character more and more. She did a fantastic job, and I really love pretty much everything about her. She was fantastic and definitely one of the best parts of the movie for me without a doubt. The rest of the cast here I thought was just as great. Uh, Matt Bomer is fantastic in this movie. I don't really want to spoil who he is or what his character is because he comes quite late in the movie, but damn was he awesome. I mean, he was awesome. He was kind of menacing. He was badass. His character, you really don't want to mess with this guy and honestly, just be, even though these guys are so tough, you really don't know if they'll be able to take him on. I will say that he is an antagonist. I'm not going to say who he is, but he did do a really great job. I really loved his character. And Matt Bomer, probably one of the first times I've seen Matt Bomer in a while, and I can actually take him seriously. Because a lot of times, his appearance you can't really take seriously. But this movie kind of makes fun of that, because you're not supposed to take him that seriously. But there are times where you are, and I really did love that. I think he did a great job. Um, another reason I was really looking forward to this was... Margaret Qualley, of course, you guys know, The Leftovers, probably my favorite show on TV. She's fantastic on that as Jill, and she's great here as well as Amelia, because you can tell that something is going on with Amelia. She's acting very suspicious. She keeps running away anytime they try to get to her, and you really don't know, you know, could she have been involved with this murder? Is she the one who committed the murder? The movie really doesn't tell you. It's actually really great, and there's this great scene where eventually she does reveal it, and I am going to say they do reveal quite early in the film actually what's going on. I like the way that was done, and she only has about three three, like, really big scenes in the movie, but I think she did a great job. I really loved her character overall. She really did serve her purpose, and she really, I mean, Margaret Qualley is a great actress. I've said before, she's a great actress. She needs to do more. Unfortunately, she didn't get to nudity in this movie, uh, even though it's about porno stars. I don't know why. I find her very attractive, as you guys know. That's not really important, though. She was funny. She was fantastic, and I really loved her character as well. Overall, I think those two, Matt Bomer and Margaret Qualley, were just as great as the main three, and, um, yeah, she really was great rates and another one of the reasons why I was looking forward to the movie and definitely paid off uh, more than ever. As far as everyone else, I think everyone else was really great here. I mean, the other characters, like uh, Mir Muriel Tilio's character or Keith David, they're all really good. They just don't have a lot to do, but they serve their purpose for when they need to be there, and I definitely really did appreciate that. And the cast as a whole worked really well. You could tell they were all having fun with the movie, things like that. But that's not just the thing that makes the movie so great. The other thing I think that works so well is Shane Black, who he only directs a few movies. He's only directed, I think, like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Iron Man 3. He did a fantastic job directing this movie because while this movie does take place in the 70s, it's not a all parodying his enemies. Anything it's embracing his enemy. I think he did a great job with that. The tone here, yes, it is a very dark comedy. I will get into that when I get into the screenplay. But it does take itself seriously and that's something I really did appreciate, that it did in fact take itself seriously when it needed to. Not all the time, but there are points when this movie takes itself seriously because, like I said, these two guys are very damaged. They're not at all happy in their lives. There's a lot of things going on with them. And I like the way they very slowly revealed things about their past and I definitely really did enjoy that. I think the tone here was really great and the investigation as well, you really were into. I honestly really got into the investigation. I really want to know what's going on. I really like the case. I definitely really did enjoy that. And I think they really used that tone really well. You can tell when the movie was trying to be funny. You can tell when it was trying to be serious. And I definitely really did appreciate that. But the screenplay here is one of the best screenplays of the year. I think the screenplay here was so well realized. There were so many things I loved about it. Because here's the thing. Like I said, it's not at all parodying the 70s. In fact, 
this felt like a 70s movie because I can't believe they said some of the things they said. I was watching the movie and I'm like, can they really say that? I mean, there is a recurring joke involving Adolf Hitler. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's probably one of the funniest things about the movie. It hits every time and I'm really like, should I be laughing right now? Is this really funny? But no, it really is funny. And there are times throughout the movie where I was definitely like that. I'm like, was that's funny, but could you really say that? The movie doesn't care. The movie doesn't give a fuck what it does really. I mean, they did what they want to do with this movie and I'm very happy about that. They didn't let anyone tell them what to do. They went exactly in the direction they wanted to and they didn't let anyone stop them really you know the movie they wanted to make was the movie that they made and that's something i really did appreciate is the way the movie really did look at the 70s but the movie also shows how different the 70s were because the 70s were a very changing time um in america you know people weren't as innocent people were getting a lot more foul-mouthed and you can see i like how russell crowe and ryan gosling were very annoyed by that, especially ryan gosling's character he was really annoyed he definitely was not appreciating how foul-mouthed and you know really adult the world had become he kind of wished things were back in the 60s and i think that was really cool the way they did that i really did appreciate that what they did with the 70s was so well realized and even porn as well like they use porn really well to tell this story and it's not at all you know just because porn is this movie this is not at all a porn type film in fact many of the jokes do involve porn, but the story overall is these two guys getting to know each other and seeing who these two guys really are and really understanding everything. You know, the movie does focus on the case, but it really is focused on these two guys and their lives, and that's something I definitely really did appreciate. I really did like seeing. There are so many references to the 70s, but it's not just referencing them. It's it's talking about them. It's showing them, and that's something I really did like. They don't just reference things to reference them because, you know, movies do that a lot, but this movie does not do that. It does not just reference things randomly to reference them. It has a purpose of referencing them, and that's something I definitely really did appreciate, is that the movie definitely knew when to quit, when not to just keep randomly referencing things, because no one wants to see a movie where you just keep randomly referencing things over and over again. That's not all this movie did, you know, definitely. It had reasons to reference things. I really did appreciate that, and this movie is hilarious. I mean, I was laughing so much throughout this movie. There are so many great gags. There are so many funny scenes. Way too many to name, but oh my god. Just in the beginning, there's a scene that I can't even say because it's so wrong, but it's so funny, and I just loved it, and I think it was fantastic the way the movie did that. I was also surprised by how dramatic it got and how seriously it did take its story. I really loved that. I thought that was really well done. Something else was really great there, and something else that's great about this movie is the cinematography, which is fantastic. They didn't hold back at all. I mean, this is a movie where, yes, it's a comedy, but the cinematography here is fantastic. It feels like any sort of action movie, and I really love that. The landscape here, the time period, I mean, everything about it looks fantastic. It's a beautiful movie to look at. It's really one of those, just the costumes here, the setting. I mean, it was so well realized that it was the 70s, and I don't know who came up with this idea, but this is an original story. It's not based off anything else, and that's something I do really like is that there are very few movies nowadays that are based on original ideas. And this movie is, in fact, based off an original idea. There's nothing based off this movie. There's nothing going along. Um, you know, there's no story that's already been told of this movie. The only story that's been told is that we're in the 1970s. Other than that, this story has never been told before. And that's something I definitely really appreciate because it's very rare nowadays you have an original idea like this. And this movie actually did do that. And I really appreciate them for doing that because it's very rare to do that. But the cinematography here was fantastic. Definitely really did love it. The score here was great as well. I mean, they never play a modern song. This is probably one of the only movies I've seen where it takes place in a, um, you know, mo in a, uh, you know, um, in a previous time, and they don't play a modern day song at all through the movie. In fact, there's nothing modern they reference. It stays strictly to the 70s. The movie opens with a 70s type disco music, and I really did love it. I thought the 70s funk was really great. I want to listen to the soundtrack. I think it's really awesome. I mean, my dad really wouldn't like it because he really hates that music, but I definitely really love the 70s. I definitely love the 70s score throughout this movie. I got that 70s feel, and they really didn't use the movie as just, oh, two guys that are completely different, because like I said, they're really not too different at all, and I really did appreciate that. The ending here I thought was perfect. The movie really flew by for me. It was into it the whole time. I definitely, there was no scene where I wasn't into it the whole time. I was so invested. I was loving it. Really, it's one of those movies that I think gets better and better as it goes on. Really, I mean, it starts off really great and then ends up really great. I really did love the way the movie ended as well. It was fantastic. And the action here, this is something I was very surprised by. The movie really takes its action very seriously. In fact, the climax of this movie is awesome. I love the climax here. I mean, there is guns, fire, 
firing. It's it's crazy. There's basically two climaxes in this movie. I really did love that, and that's something I really wasn't expecting, but the action here is serious. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen here, and it's really cool the way that it was done. I really did love that, and yes, there is some funny stuff throughout it, but I'm going to compare it to 21 Jump Street, because you know in 21 Jump Street, when things are funny, but they do take the action seriously, very much like the nice guys. The difference is that the nice guys feels like 70s action, while 21 Jump Street feels like modern day action. This feels like 70s action, and I absolutely love that. It felt like something like, you know, Chinatown or something like that. I really appreciate that. Something that we very rarely get nowadays, and I really love that. I mean, Chris Stuckman, who reviewed this movie, said this feels like a movie that shouldn't be shouldn't have come out, and that we're movies that aren't really around anymore. And in many ways, I did see that. The tone of this movie, it doesn't feel like a modern day movie at all, and that's one of the reasons why I think the movie was so great, and one of the reasons why the movie worked out so well for me, and why I was so into this movie. There's so many great things that uh, this movie did. You know, it embraced the culture. It showed why the 70s was such an interesting decade. It showed that a lot of people weren't enjoying what was going on in the 70s. It showed how foul mouthed people were. It showed how dirty they were. It makes a lot of jokes, these things, but it also really points out these issues. Some of these issues are very important, and the movie doesn't take those lightly. There are definitely things that, yes, they'll joke on, but then they actually do take seriously. That's something I really did appreciate. I didn't think the movie would do that, and they did, and that's something I think was fantastic. I really did love that, and I also heard that they are trying to make this into an actual um, series. They do want to make The Nice Guys a series, and I'm all for it, honestly. The way the movie ends, I would totally love to see a franchise. Do more of these movies with these two, but you have to have Holly involved. That's the one thing. If you don't have Holly involved in the next one, I'm not going to be as interested, because Holly added so much to this movie. That trio of Holly, Holland, and, um, you know, Healy, those three, they work so well together. I also love the way the movie ended, because the movie actually ends in this really satisfying way, especially an arc for Healy. Healy's character. There's a lot of really good arcs going on with these two, and I really love the way it really feels like a very conclusive arc that I really did enjoy. Um, if there isn't a sequel, then the movie really does feel finished. It doesn't feel like there's a, you know, they didn't set up a sequel. They did show there could be future movies, but they didn't necessarily set up a sequel. They told the story they wanted to tell, they set up that story, and now it's kind of like, if they want to go from here, they could. I would love to see them do that. I think it'd be really cool if we got a Nice Guys 2. You can also call the number, which I do I'll recommend you guys do. There's actually a Nice Guys attack agency number you can call. It's actually really funny. You'll just get the two guys arguing, which I think is really funny. I definitely really did love that. Also, any guy, any scene where the two guys were arguing, probably the funniest scene in the movie for me was the scene in an elevator. Holy shit, I was dying. I mean, this is one of those movies where there is tons of stuff going on in the background that none of them can see. There's so much background action. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so funny, and I don't want to spoil what's going on, but it was really hilarious. So overall, guys, I love the nice guys. I thought it was hilarious. Probably one of the funniest movies I've seen so far this year. Again, if I can't count Deadpool, it's the funniest movie I've seen. And I'm definitely going to give the nice guys a 4.8 out of 5 or an A. I was so close to giving this an A+. I wanted to, just something in my heart told me I didn't want to do that. Maybe after a rewatch, I will definitely give it an A+. I probably will. And I feel like this is one of those movies where as it goes on, I'll love it more and more a second time. And I definitely really love it. But overall, guys, it's a fantastic movie. It's really original. It really embraces the 70s very well. It really does everything right and really appreciate. It really shows why movies are so great, how different movies can be, and really how we do need more original ideas because we don't have many now and this movie really does embrace a lot of that and that's one of the reasons why I think this movie is as great as it is and totally why it is worth seeing in theaters. So overall, guys, in my review, The Nice Guys, please see this movie if you haven't seen it. It's really different. It's awesome. It's funny. Honestly, I recommend you see this in theaters because it's really different. And uh, definitely, out of the two movies I've seen, this is the one I recommend. But that's in my review. Hope you enjoyed the most, guys. So this movie if you have seen. Love to hear your thoughts on it. We'll see you guys in my next show, which will be for Bloodline. And we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.